Hi, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate the I Can Design a Counter Deluxe version for Android. In digital logic design, one key concept is designing a sequential circuit for a finite state machine. Usually, they teach you how to do this with a pencil and paper through drawing a bubble diagram, assigning the states, converting the bubble diagram into a state transition table, optimizing the columns of the straight transition table using methods such as Carnot map, and finally drawing the circuit. This application automates all those steps. So let's start our application by clicking on the icon. Okay, the first step is to determine the number of flip-flops we need. Oh, suppose that we have a problem of designing a divide by six counter and the states don't matter but we just want to divide it by six uh, for applications such as frequency division. So all that matters is that it goes through six states and repeats it over and over. So the number of flip-flops will be three and the counter size is six. And the reason we need 3 is because to the power of 3 is 8, and 8 covers 6. So, choosing the simplest method, we're going to increment and specify OK, and take a look at the bubble diagram. So here, it seems that it starts with zero and goes through state one, two, three, four, five, and goes back to zero. And we can simulate the operation and take a look at where the highlight is or the present state is. And we have an option of specifying a zero or one stimulus for the input, but um, for this application we're going to just ignore that and it doesn't matter wh whether it's a 1 or a 0. So we can click either of these and 0 went to a 1. It goes to a 2, 3, 4, 5 and then returns back to 0. Okay, so that's a first cut attempt to design a divide by six counter. Now let's take a look at the next step, which is the state transition table. This three columns represent the present state. Most significant bit A and B and C is the least significant bit going from 0 all the way to 7 and you can see that the next state for 0 is a 1, next state of 1 is a 2 and so on and so forth 3, 4, 5 and the next state of 5 is 0 and it already gave us the set of equations that correspond to this table A is BC plus AC prime, B is BC prime, 
plus a prime b prime c and c is c prime so we can see what circuit corresponds to this set of equations by going to the circuit and this is the sum of product representation because if we move the bubble from here to there this is an N followed by an OR so in terms of complexity let's just count the number of inputs at the very left side so this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 one thing you can see is that for the C it has two inverters um, that's just the way the program works it does not look at it and say okay let's get rid of these two inverters and um, you can do that yourself and definitely if the whole time yes the whole time is zero or a negative value such as the case with most of the shelf the flip-flops then it's perfectly okay to replace this with a single line so for this we're going to say the cost is zero so again there are a total of nine inputs to, so for this made up metrics the cost is nine So remember that and let's see if we can further optimize this. Okay, so one thing I can think of is that to design a divide by six counter, we can design a divide by three counter and then design a divide by two counter and cascade those. So Here's a divide by three counter. Goes counts up to two and goes back to zero. And um, this is not good. Let's see. Okay, this is better. So the top mirrors the bottom. So the only difference is that the most significant bit is a one here. So one zero zero. 101 and 110 so we're not done yet but uh, let's take a look at what the circuit is so here at the top of the bit the A output is circulating back into the input so it's not doing anything it's just idling here and this bottom part is implementing a divide by three counter so what we need to do is to toggle this most significant flip-flop when this circles back to a zero which is equal to this bit being a one so in terms of bubble diagram what we need to do is transition from two to a four and transition from six to a zero that should do it okay so this is what it did and let's take a look at the equation going back to the table a plus equals a prime b plus a b prime so that is an exclusive or circuit which is implemented like this and a prime b a b prime so this is totally what we expect and in terms of the complexity one two three four five six so slightly better than nine so it's advantageous to 
cascade a divide by 2 counter with a divide by 3 counter in order to make a divided by 6 counter. But we can do a little better. Let's go back to the bubble diagram. Okay. So let's try assigning the states in a gray code manner, which means that each transition will flip only one bit. So 0 can go to a 1, but 1 will go to a 3. This is setting the middle bit, and 3 will go to 7, setting the most significant bit. And we're going to count down from 7 to 6. And 6 to 4. And 4 back to 0. And that's a great call. So let's take a look at the implementation. A gets B. B gets C, and C gets A prime. So that looks like a shift register, basically. And here it is. A gets B, B gets C, and C gets A prime. And since these are all inverters, we say that this is a zero-cost circuit. So, one more issue to deal with is the don't care states. We had two states that we did not specify what's going to happen, but the program did assign some states to it in order to achieve that circuit. So let's ask the program what it did by hitting the backfill button. And we can see that the next state for 2 was a 5, and the next state for 5 was a 2. So in terms of the bubble diagram, it's just toggling back and forth between each other. This is perfect if the objective is to come up with the simplest circuit using only three flip-flops and no comment or logic. But in terms of real-life implementations, I'll say that um, this is not as reliable as a circuit where these states will go back to the main loop here. So let's do this. This is what I'll do if I'm implementing this so that in case a noise enters and we jump to one of these don't care states, we quickly go back to a valid state and minimize our damage. So it all depends on what your objective is. But uh, let's take a look at the circuit. And as we expect, it made the circuit a lot more complicated. But the key point is that our application allows you to easily conduct experiments and see what the consequences of your design decisions are. So I hope that this video was useful for you and uh, you learn about how to use my application to uh, design a finite state machine and hopefully you'll buy this application from me. Currently I'm charging only 99 cents. Thank you.